Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be back uh, with Layer 123 World Congress again. My name is Anurad Udunwara. I work for Sri Lanka Telecom. And today I'm going to discuss something on SDN and NFV. In fact, uh, it's going to be a reality check. Now, SDN and NFV as concepts, and sometimes uh, some refer to them as technologies, are quite uh, fundamental and uh, robust concepts. Uh, SDN was introduced back in 2005, uh, quite old. NFV back in 2013. Uh, in terms of time, uh, I think uh, both of them are quite mature uh, and well identified and well uh, understood uh, concepts uh, in the industry, especially in the telecommunications industry. Uh, let us first recap on something uh, usually I used to uh, share uh, in most of my presentations uh, or talks is to get the uh, idea of uh, discussing SDN and NFP today and also in the past and maybe going forward in the future is actually to, uh, especially in the telecommunication industry, it's actually to support this transformation from communication service providers to digital service providers. Many service providers in the world are today uh, either transforming or transformed to a level of DSP. And what requires that business transformation as most of us know is actually a different ways of thinking and also different ways of uh, operationalizing those thinkings. Uh, for example, the concept of networks uh, becoming platforms and then the idea of uh, dealing with hardware uh, configurations, network elements uh, being individually configured, uh, looking at the hardware concept, uh, they're being changed to uh, software and going forward uh, more of cloud native uh, type of technologies. And then uh, even if you drill down below, you will understand uh, in terms of networks, uh, the old generation networks are moving to next generation or have already moved and then to software generation networks and going forward uh, looking at this idea of a telco cloud. Uh, so what, what uh, you see underneath is actually the technologies, the real technologies being changed from legacy TDM to IP Ethernet, uh, which is packet, uh, even today we deal with packet networks and then bring in the idea of softwareization, uh, sort of trying to virtualize the next generation network to have a software generation network uh, using the technologies like SD and NFP and cloud and going forward, uh, making it more cloudified uh, in terms of a telco environment. Now let's look at SDN. Uh, even though we don't uh, hear much on SDN these days as we used to uh, in the past, everything is actually becoming uh, software defined. Now this is uh, from ONF, uh, their ONF focus projects uh, as of today. Uh, you can see that, uh, of course you have the under, underlying infrastructure, the foundation uh, based on SDN uh, principles, uh, because as, as I was uh, explaining in the beginning, uh, SDN as a concept, uh, it's, it's a very novel concept, uh, the fundamental idea is to have, have the network programmability. Uh, and if you take NFV, it's, it's a network functions virtualization. So these are very fundamental, uh, uh, like very uh, making very drastic changes uh, in the telco field uh, and also elsewhere. So we have the SDN infrastructure and we call the fabric is software defined. And when it comes to fixed line network, we have software defined BNG, software defined core networks for 5G, uh, software defined RAN, even Volta, uh, which is uh, uh, the virtualized version of an OLT uh, is also software defined. So even though we, we don't talk uh, or we don't discuss much uh, as SDN or software defined networking, uh, we really understand that uh, everything today is actually software defined, uh, drive, driven by the, the core principles of uh, software defined networking. 
And if you look at on the on the same lines, if you look at uh, how software defined networking uh, since let's say 2004, uh, early 2004 uh, to date, uh, if you compare that with SD WAN on on Google trending, uh, you can see as a topic. Uh, one might see that SD WAN is more discussed or more searched uh, today in today's uh, search engine, especially in, on Google, uh, compared to SDN. So, so that this shows that SDN all of a sudden is actually now uh, the same for NFP as well. It's, it has gone uh, to the level of uh, the foundation, and on top of that, we see different verticals being built on top of that. Uh, for example, SD-WAN, uh, one such uh, other example is uh, uh, software-defined RAN. And if you take uh, the NFV side, uh, like the last release, uh, NFV release from Etsy was uh, the 2019-2020 release, but after that, we haven't seen any releases. Uh, in fact, we don't need any releases because uh, from all these one, two, three, four releases, uh, it see has uh, more or less, uh, I mean, more or less uh, define what, uh, what, what is NFP and what, what components uh, actually constitute the whole NFP menu architecture. But since there were certain uh, operationalized issues, uh, people look at different aspects, like for example, lean NFP uh, was a concept to sort of uh, NFP as NFP menu as an architecture is quite uh, disaggregated. And uh, because of the same reason, uh, when you want to re-aggregate in terms of delivering end-to-end -end services, uh, we have certain issues. And one pragmatic approach uh, to address that was uh, this idea of lean NFP. But again, uh, lean NFP, uh, I haven't seen much happening uh, since 2019. So that doesn't mean that NFP is, is obsolete, but NFP, again, uh, uh, same for SDNS, they, they as concepts are very fundamental to the changes that are happening, uh, especially in the telecommunication industry. Only thing is the way that uh, these uh, changes happen, the form or the format uh, is quite different, uh, but the underpinning technologies remain uh, as, as uh, I explained. This is a slide uh, I think I shared in Barcelona back in, uh, 2015, uh, this was uh, the kind of uh, open source uh, projects uh, at that time, uh, uh, which I, I could identify related to telco softwareization and softwareization in general. Uh, so we have SDN, NFP, orchestration, cloud orchestration, etc. And, and uh, this was a kind of uh, looked uh, at uh, something like complicated uh, uh, option uh, scenario where you have multiple options to deal with uh, different uh, technologies and different uh, implementation of these SD and NFP concepts. But going forward, uh, this is uh, something I presented uh, back in early 2020 in Dubai in one of the conferences uh, I, I could not actually update this slide since then, but uh, this was the change uh, uh, from 2015 to 2020, uh, that the number of open source projects and also other projects are actually uh, combining uh, and uh, included uh, together, uh, especially with Linux Foundation networking and, and also other projects related to again, SD and NFP orchestration, and multiple other projects are also uh, making uh, support uh, to those uh, major projects to uh, be successful. So what we see is that uh, the number of options, the scenarios, the combinations uh, have increased drastically. And if you check it uh, today, uh, you will find that uh, you find more, uh, more projects, more options uh, being uh, made available to uh, the telco industry. And then uh, if you look at uh, the sort of uh, ideas that actually came in to uh, sort of reconcile uh, these multiple uh, objectives 
and to have a single uh, consolidated uh, uh, approach for for some of the projects for example onap and osm for orchestration uh, it was it was actually widely discussed in the industry uh, back in 2019 to have uh, or even before uh, people envisioned that onap and osm is uh, will be uh, combined or reconciled uh, in 2019 but that that never happened so we see some of the projects being uh, merged uh, and uh, put forward uh, in in a, in a common objective, but uh, there are certain other projects uh, still uh, operating at a very independent stage. So what the industry, especially the telco industry, realizes is that it's not just SDN and NFB, but we need several other things to make it a holistic. Uh, uh, the network transformation or, or the business transformation uh, or the company transformation. Uh, things like automation and we have multiple flavors of ops, uh, be DevOps, DevSecOps, uh, GitOps, AIOps, and you can have uh, several combinations of where you combine uh, uh, the things with operations and more of uh, having a kind of DevOps uh, architecture. Uh, CI, CD, microservices, artificial intelligence, machine learning, edge, and, and that list goes on. Uh, so, so kind of we have taken SDN and NFP for granted because most of these things work together with SDN and NFP and all of a sudden, as I have been telling, uh, SDN and NFP has uh, gone to backstage and actually doing the real support uh, in terms of uh, the core concepts uh, uh, together with these uh, technologies and concepts. And for example, if you take 5G, uh, in 5G architecture, whether it is in the access, whether it is in the transport, whether it is in the core, uh, you find SD and NFV are fundamental uh, uh, components of, of those architectures. And NFV might uh, be a little different, uh, especially in 5G and all the other technologies uh, in the future, where we are looking at uh, not necessarily network functions, virtualization, but a uh, different flavor of that uh, uh, using containers, uh, which, which we refer to as cloud uh, native network functions, uh, rather than using virtual network functions, which the SDN, uh, sorry, the NFE Mano architecture refers to. So altogether, what we see is uh, a shift uh, happening uh, from the original focuses uh, back in 2005 or uh, back in 2012-13, uh, SDN uh, was refocused, people looked at that as uh, in kind of uh, intent-based networking. And then uh, they realized that it's, it's not really the SDN technology, but uh, what is the real outcome that we are going to achieve, uh, which is automation. So the focus shift from SDN to IBN and uh, today the more focus is more on automation and together sometimes with orchestration. The same for NFV. NFV uh, and also lean NFV. And today we are actually uh, talking about uh, more on cloud native, uh, trying to use containers, uh, microservices, and uh, things like that uh, in, in virtualized uh, network functions uh, architectures. And the cloud is also redefined to suit it uh, more, more on a telco perspective. And we refer to that as telco cloud. And you will see the telco cloud will also have it connections to SDN and NFV concepts. In this case, it, it, will, it will have more connections to cloud native technologies and also the automation uh, happening on the network side, also uh, happening on the cloud side. And the focus on CapEx, OPEX and PCO reduction, which was uh, the fundamental idea behind uh, these technologies when they were first introduced by, uh, especially by the operators, uh, but then, the industry realized that it's it's more than the ability that you get uh, in terms of flexibility and agility, uh, rather than uh, reducing your capex and opex. Uh, flexibility and agility is actually driving more revenue in terms of bringing in uh, new uh, new services and uh, giving you the agility to make uh, real time changes uh, based on customer demand and uh, changing external environment. What, what this really made the, uh, I mean, in industry, especially on the telco side is actually to uh, 
while the telcos are transforming themselves to become software defined or, or really the digital service providers, what really make uh, them uh, on the on the sidelines is actually to change the the entire organizational culture and the architecture and the structure maybe to more orient on on a software telco. Uh, so so we are talking about disaggregation and modularization, uh, which is quite new to uh, telco because we we are used to. Uh, to have more hardware boxes and uh, interconnecting them. But now all of a sudden we are working on virtual and software environments uh, where things are disaggregated and modularized. And uh, cloudification or virtualization uh, is something uh, quite uh, uh, relevant to uh, software telco. And because of these disaggregations uh, and cloudification, you, you have the idea of the orchestration and also the open APIs, which enables uh, you to actually work with multiple vendors uh, uh, in harmony uh, to realize the, the, the goal of a software telco. So in terms of options, both, uh, both uh, open source and uh, standard defining organization, uh, the, the, the de facto standards, we have like basically three options. If, if the standard or, or the open source uh, standard uh, is is mature enough is uh, is capable enough you you really don't need to uh, reinvent the wheel you can just just use it and that is exactly what uh, most of the vendors are doing for example if you take uh, the 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 famous or the more popular uh, versions of uh, sdn controllers uh, on the open source side uh, you take odl open daylight and uh, onos for example and most of the vendors uh, take this uh, and and uh, uh, do uh, certain uh, certain other changes, but they, they don't try to reinvent the wheel uh, because it's uh, the, the source code, uh, the open source uh, code is available. But places where that does not address your requirement, especially as an operator, uh, you can always try to modify uh, your your wheel uh, to suit uh, your your needs. But that, that needs your internal skills, capabilities, education, and knowledge uh, to do those modifications. We, we see some of the operators uh, uh, doing that. And uh, we also sometimes may need to reinvent uh, the wheel because uh, there, there could, uh, I mean, you cannot uh, use the existing wheel, uh, maybe modifying it to suit your requirement uh, also make uh, I mean, sometimes may not make much sense. So in that sense, I mean, you have to reinvent the wheel. So we have some examples uh, where operators trying to uh, come out with their own versions of uh, certain stacks, uh, certain software uh, pieces. Uh, and, and that is also possible. And, and that actually, if you can uh, uh, give it to the community, uh, somebody else might also use it uh, in, in their environment. So these are basically the options uh, that largely we have uh, uh, going forward. Uh, talking about SDN and NFV and also open source, uh, which is pretty much uh, uh, driven, uh, I mean, SDN and NFV uh, pretty much driven these days uh, by most of the open source projects. Uh, this can't be the, the, the case. And I see uh, open source, uh, is certainly with the support of Linux Foundation and uh, CNCF, uh, we have very, very robust mature architectures for SDN and NFP and op also open source. And uh, this, this requirement will, will not arise. So it, it's a matter of uh, getting the innovation uh, again uh, back to the operators. And uh, we, we have had this uh, discussion earlier also uh, moving from uh, hardware focus to software focus and uh, trying to co-innovate in the future together with uh, operators uh, and vendors. So in terms of upgrading skills, uh, we again have multiple options in the industry. This is, these are some of the examples, uh, whether you want to certify your team, whether you want to certify, uh, I mean, you want to use certified vendors or you want to certify your environment, uh, these, uh, these uh, confirmance uh, uh, test, uh, uh, testing uh, is available. 
So in summary, uh, SDN and NFP as core concepts uh, have remained the same for the past, uh, past years. However, the possibilities SDN and NFP create have expanded as I explained. So it's more like we have taken SDN and NFP for granted. Uh, and the focus today is uh, more on the outcomes than the underlying technology, uh, especially on the operator side. And uh, the increased operator confidence and skills will actually lead to increased uh, uh, innovation and better cost benefit. So that's it for me. And thank you very much.